Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're gonna to be doing this fun winter snowflake design. This image was one that we used for our Flynn Spired Challenge in my Flynn Sisters Exclusives group. And I got a great response on this one. So many people loved it. I was so excited to get this on a tumbler. You're gonna see all the products in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so as usual, I'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup. Today I'm using a 24 ounce taper from Craft Haven, which you'll find a link and a discount for down below in the description box. And we're gonna base paint it this beautiful navy from Rust-Oleum. This is called True Navy. It is a ultra matte color. And I'm gonna let this dry for a solid 20 minutes or so, depending on the temperature in your workspace, as long as it's dry to the touch before we move on to the next step, which is spraying these little bursts of white. I'm using Color Shots White, I think it's called Up in the Clouds or something, whatever their white matte spray paint is. And I'm just spraying random dots of varying sizes all over the cup. This takes a little bit of practice, so you may wanna practice on a piece of cardboard to get it right first, because if you're too close, it'll drip. If you're too far, the fan will be too wide. As soon as that paint was dry to the touch, which took about 20 minutes or so, I did heat up my tumbler with my heat gun. It's super chilly in Washington right now. It's below 30 degrees, and so my shop is pretty cold. Getting the tumbler warm before we spread the epoxy on as the adhesive for our glitter will ensure an even thin coat with perfect coverage and it's gonna glide on just like butter. We're using less than probably one milliliter of epoxy here. After I got everything spread nice and even, I am going to use Ice Cream Dream and I'm gonna pour a little bit of it into a medicine cup. This is a beautiful white opal custom mix from Maestra Creations. You can find a link for this glitter and a discount code down below in the description box. And I'm using a medicine cup today just so I have a little more control. You could see what I'm doing here, aiming for the center of that white dot that we spray painted earlier, starting close and then slowly backing up and going up higher and higher so I can fan out more. And then once I get some good coverage in the center of our dot, I will angle the cup slightly and just using little tiny taps, tap a tiny amount at a time to let it cascade out from the center of that dot. So that's how we're gonna kind of ombre in our colors with just a small section. So it's really, it sounds more complicated than it is, but again, just starting close to the cup, then slowly move up, doing gentle taps at a time. Really take your time with this step. We are doing a high contrast gradient here. So we have a very dark glitter that's blending into a very light glitter and that can be super tricky. So just be patient and take your time. Here you'll see me angling that cup around just so I can spread out that fan from the center of our white dot. We're going to repeat this all the way around the cup through all the white dots that we painted earlier. This is what's going to provide that kind of illuminated look around our snowflakes that we're going to add in later. Once I've got all the white dots completed with decent coverage, I'm gonna go in with Blueberry. This is a beautiful deep navy blue, again from Maestra Creations. And I'm gonna start by getting full coverage in the center sections that are away from the white dots, I guess. <laughs> and then again, angling the cup to cascade that color into the white sections very gently. So I'm working very slowly through this to get a nice gentle blend between the blue sections and the white dots. So aiming in the center of that larger blue section, I'm going to angle my cup and gently tap until it cascades nicely into the white section. 
I'm not trying to go for full coverage on the first shot. That's the benefit of using epoxy method application with our glitter is that we can build up the blend without trying to do it in a hurry and all in one shot. And we also won't have to do two coats. After I'm pretty happy with all the coverage I've gotten from the blue glitter, I'm gonna go back in and blend a little bit more with my white glitter aggressively tapping off the excess before each step. So if I'm going from blue glitter application back to white, I'm gonna aggressively tap off the excess before going back into the white. Now, that's also why I used a medicine cup for the white glitter application because if I get any stray blue glitter in there, I'm not gonna introduce that and contaminate the rest of my white glitter in the actual shaker. I let that dry on my rack for a good two to three hours before moving on to this step. We want to seal this in really well, so I've got some clear spray paint from Rust-Oleum. This is the two times clear gloss spray paint, and we're going to do just one generous coat, and I'm going to let this dry for a solid 30 minutes or so before we move on to our first epoxy coat. I've got about 60 milliliters of epoxy mixed here. I probably won't use all of it. And I wanna get a nice even coat on this. We wanna get good coverage over your glitter. I am using Flynn Sisters Epoxy for this entire project. If you haven't gotten your hands on this epoxy yet, it is sold out, but no worries. We will be restocking here soon in the month of December. So keep an eye out for that. We will also be releasing a fast set sometime after the first of the year. We're still working on that, so just be patient with us. Um, but this is a wonderful epoxy. I absolutely love it. It does like to be warmed up though, so if, especially if you're in a colder climate, maybe getting a, a bottle warmer or a heating pad or something to warm the separate parts before you measure and mix for your best results. I'm gonna spread this on like I normally would and I'm gonna hit it with my torch to pop any micro bubbles. And I'm gonna let this dry for about six to eight hours before I come back and do a second coat right over the top of this. That second coat I let dry for mm, about overnight-ish, about 12 hours. And I'm gonna remove all the excess epoxy from the bottom of my tumbler here with a craft knife. I'm using a 24 ounce taper so it has a nice sharp edge. I'm not even going to attempt to epoxy over the edge or glitter over the edge because it's so sharp. I just leave it like this. And to establish the seal, we're gonna sand around the bottom rim in the same way that we usually sand around the top rim. We're gonna expose a fine line of stainless steel with our sanding, and that fine line of stainless steel is where our final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the seal for our tumbler. If you're confused about what I'm talking about, I'm gonna link a video down below that explains why or how I leave the bottom of my tumblers unfinished sometimes. Just makes for an easier finish, especially with these sharp edged tumblers. I'm also gonna sand around the sides to knock down any pokey bits before we move on to our decals because we wanna make sure that this is totally smooth before we put our vinyl over it. I'm gonna clean this up with some rubbing alcohol and paper towels after I'm done with my sanding. And now we're ready to move on to the next step. I've already cut my snowflake designs with my Cricut using this beautiful blue vinyl that I got from Two Moms Craft Shack. I will have it linked down below in the description box along with a discount code. I found this snowflake design from Creative Fabrica, which I know a lot of you guys have memberships with them, so you should be able to download this design for free. I will have it linked down below. And I offset this baby it's cold outside quote. I used the same one a couple weeks ago on a different Tumblr tutorial. I'm just gonna go ahead and layer my vinyl. I did the quote in white along with some of the more simpler, smaller snowflake designs to add a little interest and dimension. In hindsight, I wish I would have offset the quote using a navy vinyl so it would have stuck out more, but whatever. <laughs> Too late now. Uh, and as usual, I'm gonna turn my decal upside down or face down and peel back that paper backing just to loosen the decal off the paper backing so there's no drama when I go to transfer it onto my cup. 
I'm gonna apply my decal like I always do using the hinge method. We've got an excess of the transfer tape that we're gonna use to anchor our decal while we peel one side, snip that paper off, and then we'll repeat the process on the opposite side, smoothing out everything nice and firmly as we go. If you lost any commas or dots to your eyes, just paint those in with a paint marker, easy peasy. And now I'm going to apply the snowflakes. I'm gonna do the smaller white ones around the quote here and just kind of randomly around the cup. And then for the blue snowflakes, we're gonna put those in the centers of our white illuminated spots that we created with our glitter earlier. I really love the contrast of the blue color snowflakes with the white illuminated spots behind them. I think it's so pretty. I think you could also use this technique for different things like maybe Christmas lights or something. I don't know, I think it's a beautiful design though. I did measure each one of these ahead of time to make sure that they were sized so that the ends of the snowflakes and just outside of the white glitter spots that we made. So we want them sized, you know, about a half inch wider than the actual white dot on the cup. So most of these I've sized between like two to three inches, no more than three inches though, because we don't want them to really dominate the cup. And I want to fit as many of those beautiful blue snowflakes on here as I can. Once we've got all of those applied to the remainder of the cup, I'm going to use my white acrylic paint pen and we're just going to color in some little dots here and there just to add some whimsy and interest to our design. I think it's really cute. All right, so then once I got done with my little dots and my vinyl, we're going to apply our final coats of epoxy. This one took two final coats. I would have gotten it done in one final coat, but I got a little cat hair in it. <laughs> Story of my life. I absolutely love my new Flynn Sisters epoxy because it is a medium viscosity formula, so it's gonna give you that nice thick coverage so that you can get a final coat over your decals in just one shot. Uh, but it's also going to release those bubbles because it's not too thick like a high viscosity formula would be. Um, this one is going to take about 12 hours to fully dry and then of course 72 hours for a full cure like most epoxies. If you wanna know more about Flynn Sisters premium epoxy resin, I will link a video down below where I share all the details about our formula. After I finish this up, I'm gonna show you guys how we complete the bottom of our tumbler. So that final coat has been drying for over 12 hours. You can see the beautiful gloss and shine. Absolutely love it. Before we start on finishing off this bottom, we wanna clean off any kind of excess epoxy or spray paint. If you have larger chunks of epoxy, you could just pop that off with the edge of your craft knife, being careful not to scrape those edges though. After we get this all cleaned up, I'm going to use my two and a half inch hole punch to cut a perfect circle out of that same blue vinyl that we used for our snowflakes. And then apply that inside the little well of our bottom here, pushing out any kind of air bubbles as we're firmly pressing down this vinyl. Then I'm gonna mix about seven milliliters of UV resin with a tiny amount of that ice cream dream white opal glitter that we used earlier. And we're just gonna spread that along the bottom again, just nesting it down into that bottom well, spreading it out all along to the edges as cleanly as possible. I am gonna hit that real quick with my torch to pop any bubbles, and then I will put it under my UV light for about two minutes. Once my bottom is done, I'm gonna get some acetone and a paper towel, and I'm gonna clean up any kind of excess paint on the inside and along the top rim here, using my craft knife to scrape off any kind of excess epoxy, but being careful not to scratch the inside of our tumbler. If I have any stubborn paint spots inside my tumbler, I like to use pure lemon essential oil to get that off. This stuff works absolutely fantastic for stubborn stuck on spots and my cup. The goal here is to make sure that the cup looks exactly like it did 
on the inside as it did when I first took it out of the box from the manufacturer. I normally don't show this process in my tutorials, but I thought it would be good for a quick little review, okay? Once we get all the paint and stuff out of the inside, I take this inside and clean it up with some Dawn dish soap and like a scrub daddy sponge, wash it out really well, dry it up nicely, and now we're ready to take some pretty photos. Here's the finished product. I love how this turned out let me know what you guys thought in the comments and if you liked our video please be sure to give us a big thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel i upload new videos every wednesday and saturday i've been a little behind lately but i promise i will catch up thanks so much for watching And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.